Hey everyone, um, a lot of familiar faces in the room. For those of you that don't know me, like she mentioned, my name's Jason Kaplan, and I run our shopper and CPG team at Velasis Digital. And what I wanna spend the next 30 or so minutes talking about is artificial intelligence. And whether you're at an event like Supplier Community, or you're at a larger event like I was at last week at Shop Talk in Las Vegas, or you're just reading industry articles, you've probably heard the term AI. But the challenge for us in this room is to understand what does that really mean for us? How do we leverage AI and more specifically conversational AI to engage shoppers in new ways, activate them, drive them in store, drive ROI for our brands? And how do we leverage this technology to bring innovative ideas to our retail partners like Sam's Club and Walmart? So I'm lucky enough to be joined by my colleague Mike Balducci from Velasis and Vic Fatnani from Google. So come on up, guys. So Mike, we'll start with you. Why don't you just give us an introduction to your background and what your role is at Velasis. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, Mike Balducci, uh, Vice President of Velasis. I run our media lab, so that's basically where we collaborate with folks like Google and other uh, media technology providers to create new opportunities to engage and activate consumers in digital channels. And Vic? Yeah, hi hey guys, Vic Fatlani. Uh, I am the co-founder and GM of AdLingo, uh, which is out of Area 120, which is an incubator inside of Google. Uh, been at Google for 13 years, uh, pretty much a decade in ad tech specifically, and part of the time in engineering, and part of that I spent six years with Accenture. So, all right, so let's talk about the partnership that you guys have been working on, the genesis of it, and, and why now does it make sense to actually start talking to marketers about this technology? Yeah, so uh, probably two, actually just coming up maybe even now in three years, we, uh, we got really interested at the last digital in chatbots. And um, the, the first platform that launched uh, a chatbot capability was Facebook Messenger. So we started to develop capabilities to deliver chatbots on uh, Facebook Messenger and, and got connected to Vic and the AdLingo team. And you know, the big challenge for our early test partners was discovery and engagement, right? So the cost incurred to, to drive a new messaging conversation in Facebook Messenger. And so we, we literally just, just rolled up our sleeves and, and started working with the AdLingo team on how to sort of break through and drive a, you know, a, very, a more efficient uh, economic there. And then since then, that's that's involved to actually moving off of Facebook Messenger with chatbots um, and into display advertising, which opens up, you know, a much broader uh, audience opportunity than just just the Facebook Messenger users. And uh, you know, that that led to the launch of conversational ads uh, last fall. Yeah, and also, you know, what's interesting is. Um, we, and within Area 120, and for those of you guys who don't know what Area 120 is within Google, it's a pretty much a product incubator, um, and pretty much it started about two and a half years ago, um, and the idea was really, uh, you know, most of you might have read, but you know, Google has a 20% program, uh, which allows engineers and product developers to do something on the side on a 20% basis, and really the genesis of the program was to be able to create businesses to create big valuation for Google uh, and create product value uh, that can be done on the side. And actually Gmail and some of our ad products came out of people doing 20% time. So this Area 120 was a platform and a program that allows us to do that. So when we started on AdLingo, which was about you know, two and a half years ago, it was the same time that, that Mike actually started looking at chatbots uh, in 2016 when Facebook launched, one of the things we thought about was you know, there's definitely a lot of areas we can apply conversational AI and chatbots to, but like, is there really, do we, should we just build a solution for the sake of building a solution and then looking for a problem, or should we look for a problem and then find build a solution off of that? So we actually waited almost two years before we went public with our product, um, and that was last October. And what we found, as Mike pointed out, was in the two years that a lot of the platforms, not just Facebook, but Viber and Kik, who are developing chatbots, was that discoverability was number one problem. And, and the, com the common thread went something like this when I talked to customers, they're like, hey, I've developed this amazing AI experience that has all the bells and whistles, 
but nobody's using it at scale. And we're like, and that, that just was a pattern that kept happening. We're like, look, we're investing a lot of resources in this technology. We think there's application, but there's not mass scale and reach. And so, you know, last October with our product, which hopefully you'll see a demo here pretty quickly, was, you know, what you'll see happen is our ability to solve discoverability at scale. Um, and that's what was the product launch that we actually had last October. Yeah, so that's a good point. So before we jump into any more questions, let's ground everyone in what we're really talking about and what a conversational ad actually is. So I think there's a demo we're gonna show and, and Mike, you can kind of talk yeah. through what we're looking at. Yeah, so, so the big challenge on Facebook Messenger initially was that you know, someone, you, you would advertise in the news feed and the engagement would be the opportunity to have a conversation driven by AI, but you'd have to hop from your Facebook app into the Messenger app. And so there'd be a huge drop off there and then the bot would reply to you um, in Facebook Messenger and then you know there'd be another drop off there with people not replying to the user. So this ad essentially solves that problem because it lives on virtually any website that serves you know any exchange-based inventory and if you, uh, you can see the ad there and she's engaging with the ad, basically it opens up a chat um, interface just like the way you would instant message on any app like Messenger. You're now in, instant messaging with this ad um, and an application that Velasquez Digital actually develops based on an AI, you know, based off an AI platform that can, you know, drive sort of any type of engagement you want. In this example, we're bringing in beauty tips from influencers. Um, and offering beauty tips, we can also do cash back um, through this because you know we can take a receipt in through email, we can take a receipt in through through the chat app. So there's opportunities to to uh, offer incentives for purchase. There, you know, we can add location search, all that stuff. You can save the conversation just like you would save or bookmark a website. You can bookmark this conversation. You can go back to it um, in your browser and continue the conversation. So. You know, when we launched this, the big reveal was that, you know, it was 35 times more cost effective than, you know, and driving a new messaging conversation than Facebook Messenger. So, you know, for the cost, for less than the cost of a click to your website, you could actually drive an engagement with, with a customer uh, through messaging. So if you think about this capability tied into location and targeting technology, how does that all work together to function as one cohesive ad? Yeah, so all the you know, attributes they use to target a normal display ad can be applied here. Um, Google does all the heavy lifting on the ad serving and targeting, and you know, we use Velasquez digital segments, we can use other third party segments to target. Those are all delivered to, to the, uh, the ad server. And so you can do essentially anything you can do on a display ad, you can do with this app. Okay. So let's talk about some of the early tests that you guys have done. What are some of the, the use cases you've seen? And more importantly, what are some of the key insights that you've gleaned from these tests? Yeah, and you know, I, I think one of when we first started, and I think we're still on that journey. Um, you know, one of the things we've heard and seen is when companies and brands are launching new products, um, oftentimes it's pretty confusing to the consumer. Um, and one of the things that we've kind of what's resonated with us as as well as our customers and our brands that we're working with is the ability to actually have users kind of see the value of the brand um, before making a purchase, right? So today, if you're offering a coupon um, and or even if you are trying to have a consumer download an app, you know, the first question is, should I? Like, what's the value to me, right? And I think what's the great about this format um, is that it's the ability to offer the value first and then have the trust be developed from the brand to the user. And it goes like, look, before you get a coupon from me, before you download my app, let me just give, show you the value that I provide to you as an end user and a consumer. And you can kind of have this lightweight conversation in a two-way that you are not able to, to today with display ads and for decades, right? It's always been a one-way coming conversation and communication channel and now the ads you have the ability to actually have a conversation through AI um, and I think that's really powerful 
in some of the early tests that we've done, uh, you know, there's a top beauty brand uh, that we ran with in the UK. Um, you know, they saw over two minute of engagement time. Uh, with Barilla, uh, which is one of the other uh, through glasses that we partner with, they saw over a minute of engagement time and which allowed shoppers to be actually looked at like, okay, like these are all the recipes I can make with Barilla pasta, right? Because like now I know what are the options for me because my end goal is to make, you know, a dinner or lunch and now I can actually go shop for those products. So it's showing the value first and gaining the trust and then after that, you know, you can kind of, the customers will come back to you. So I, I think the, the ability to just have that engagement time um, is one of the great like first initial metrics that we've seen. So the other, just to add to that, the, the conversational in, insights are really interesting because you can look at how people are engaging with the features or if they're free forming, asking questions. You know, the very, very informative information there to maybe optimize your, your marketing strategies. Yeah, and I think the beauty is actually a great vertical. Um, so you could, you could imagine, you know, the future, if I see like five years from now, um, I believe your brands will have an AI assistive uh, component to it. And I could almost th think about the future being not social influencer, but a brand, brand influencer that's AI driven, where you're like, okay, like I know for this brand, you know, th there's the AI influencer for that brand. And that will almost be the connection that end users and consumers have rather than a celebrity, for example, because um, you can actually do that at scale. And you can kind of see that recommendation that will come uh, from an AI perspective. And I see really see that application. Beauty is really interesting because if you think about it, when when you know you try to go for a beauty product at Nordstrom or any other uh, big mall stores, you're like, okay, there's so many products, but what's right for me from a personal level? And you kind of have to go through this decision tree. It's like, you know, my skins are dry or like I have lines and these are the right products for me based on that combination. And I think when you have a conversation through an ad, you can actually get that personal. It's like, look, based on these suggestions, based on this decision tree, we recommend X product. And what's, what's phenomenal is one of, the, one of the beauty campaigns that we ran, we saw 55% completion rate once you started talking to the ad, right, through the conversation and to land to a product recommendation page, which is phenomenal, right, for the conversation that started to have 55% completion rate all the way to product recommendation. Um, I think that's pretty phenomenal to be able to get just through a display ad. So as kind of taking on that idea and we think about, you know, what everyone in this room is concerned about, driving sales and engagement with consumers to get them to either buy online or in store on walmart.com or in Walmart stores or Sam's Club stores. What are some thought starters or what's, what's kind of ahead for, for this technology to leverage for everyone in this room? Yeah, so um, there, there's, it's, we, there's just a ton of features coming down the pipe that, that just are going to add, I mean, awesome capabilities here um but the you know i'm, I'm out of I don't know if you want to talk about some of the features, Vic, but... Yeah, no, I mean, I would say, like, one of the things that I'm excited about to see, too, is, like, today, so, like, I, you know, the product recommendation, right, as, as a way of going down. Um, you know, one of the things we see a lot is, like, drop-off. Like, once you go to a website, consumers like, okay, there's, like, 100 products now, but wait, like, actually, I don't have time. Like, I'm just going to X out of the browser or, like, close a window because, like, I'm lost, right? And so from a time perspective, and I think you could almost think about like actually having that hard fight be done within the ad. I'd be like, okay, what are the right products for me? Pick it, choose it, and then like, okay, I'm ready to go. And then it's almost the last mile uh, to actually buy the product, right? And that's kind of sales conversion that I think we all are kind of targeting. And I think down the road, you know, we see a vision where you can actually, rather than just kind of having that trust and the value to actually do transactions on the, on the back end down the road in the future, where you can like actually even be able to say, okay, now I know my product, I've had this AI conversation, but now I could buy it right then and there. So that last mile, which is always the last hurdle uh, for a lot of, but, but you can, we can kind of enable that through transactions and other ways of actually pretty much closing the loop, so to speak. Um, and then obviously geolocation, we can do a lot of other feature sets that we are kind of working on, but it's in the pipeline. Yeah, the, other, the, the one point I will add is that we do like this opportunity to provide customer service at the shelf. So, you know, for example, you could have a scan code or you could have a short link URL or another way to drive someone into your conversational uh, AI at the shelf if they have product questions. We've had a lot of brands talk to us about that. It's really easy to convert an FAQ into a conversational experience. Anything that you're, you know, it, it, just look at some of the objectives you have on your website. Uh, you know, most of those, if not all, could be translated in a conversational experience. 
the apps that we create to support these ads can be hosted on your site as well. So you can actually start testing the conversational experience there. And, the, and then the other piece of this is the machine learning component. So we hear a lot about machine learning. These, these apps get smarter with more usage, right? And there's people involved and you're looking at how the apps are performing, how they're responding, are they answering the questions? You know, we, we focus on keeping it simple to start, keeping people on sort of a decision tree based experience. You know, we do see people fall out of that experience that we can make adjustments to it. And then the, you know, the apps are getting smarter and smarter over time. So as, as Vic said, five years from now, I think 99% of the questions will be able to be answered by, you know, a conversational assistant, you know, driven, you know, by an AI platform. Yeah. Now I was going to say, I just like consumers have so many choices uh, and it's confusing out there. Right. And it's like one of the one of the greatest quotes or tagline, which actually we are using as part of our conversation that we got from one of our customers is like what I love about the ad is like, you know, they says like I can go to my customer to my brands and be like, you know, stop selling and start helping. Right. And I, I think that's the way we look at it is like, yes, sure. Like the end goal for I think it's sales and, and kind of conversion from that perspective. But like you're actually helping consumers. And I think from that perspective, there's a lot of value gained just from being able to get that out there. In, in the medium that they want to communicate in. So if we all, you know, if you have kids like me, they live in text messaging, right? They're, they're instant messaging and in Instagram, they're instant messaging on Snapchat. That's the sort of preferred way they, they want to communicate. So five years from now, when, when those kids are consumers, you know, they're going to want to message brands versus, you know, call or send in an email or navigate through a website and try to find an answer in an FAQ. So that's sort of where we see the puck sort of going with this. Awesome. Thanks, guys. So we want to leave a lot of time or as much time as possible for questions because I know this probably spurs a lot of thoughts within everyone out there's minds. So um, I believe Mary has a microphone. So anyone, just raise your hand if you have a question or anything you want to ask of uh, Mike and Vic. So obviously with the online shopping and the grocery delivery, of course, with Walmart brands specifically, within the ad, what is the likability of you being able to just literally add it to your online shopping cart? Yes, yeah, so, so that is a feature that's available today. It you is? Can do, yeah, you can do linking within the ad, deep linking, and add to cart. That's all. Okay. Yeah, so basically anything you're doing in a display ad today, you can do in this, this ad as well. Yeah, so I might have missed this because I was taking pictures, but uh, <laughs> so what's, what's the exact name of this ad? What's the ad unit called? Conversational ads. Conversational ads, yeah. okay. And then you said before that this is, this is across all platforms, right? This is any ad network out there can have access to this? Yeah, so we're running it through programmatic channels uh, through, our, through our DSP. Um, and so yeah, it's available on like pretty much all exchanges right there out there. And last question, uh, when is the new Google uh, I, uh, iOS coming out? Or not iOS, the new Google OS coming out? Oh, I, I mean, I have, I work on AdLingo only, so I can only <laughs> talk about AdLingo. Thanks. But, yeah. That was my PR prep question. <laughs> <laughs> So just in support of your whole program, one of the things our agency is doing is taking the data science from the ad component and then creating an experiential on-page experience because part of what we need to do is take Google Analytics and the data we have from the ad set and create awareness for new products. So we have brands that don't that want to have that exchange and we love it, but we also want to have brands that when we look at Google Analytics and we look at our shopper data, we can look at how different products need to have visibility and unexpected sales occur there. So I kind of wanted to hear from you guys how we can use that to get the data and the personalization on page, we're doing it for our brands, but we need to be able to connect to what you have and make sure that that carries into Google Analytics and we can compare the bottom to the top as the user experience comes and raise the awareness of products that aren't selling well. I mean, our job is to make sure we're raising the bar um, and not just doing ego sales, which are selling really well apparently, but you know, the, the, the sponge that's not selling so well. Help me understand how we're gonna connect the two. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, so you know, it's interesting. So when we think about the value prop, and I think 
one thing that you hit on really well is just the product education and the insights that you're gaining from analytics. Um, so there's a couple of ways to look at it. So one, you could think about the ad providing insights and analytics, uh, how you kind of reshape your marketing strategies on the back end. But to your point, I think one of the things, if I understand your question correctly, like any marketing insights or analytics insights that you have, you can actually kind of bring it to the ad. But like, hey, we know you've struggled to find, you know, you know, these products, or like you don't know about these products as much because we've gotten questions based on Google Analytics data. So you can actually run a media campaign to actually educate and solve that challenge and that problem through a conversational medium, which is kind of looking at from bottoms up versus from the ad down, uh, going to the cart. Um, and I think that's great because then you're like, look, rather than like running, you know, TV campaigns or any other channels, now we can actually have a conversational campaign, which is kind of like we know these are the challenges that we're facing and we can educate the market. Um, one of the greatest, I think, examples recently um, that I saw when I went to, com um, to, to a conference was like, you know, MetLife, you think about sending them life insurance, but I actually didn't know they also do car insurance, <laughs> right? And they were like, I think a lot of consumers don't know that in the U.S. And, and so, like, imagine if MetLife were able to run a conversational experience for that, for educate consumers that they actually also do car insurance, right? And so these are, like, other ways to kind of think about, like, using... The, the format as a way to educate the market something they might not even know as your brand is changing. And also I think like if you think about a lot of companies are going through a digital transformation, right? They're, they're moving more digital and what that is doing is changing their brand identity. And part of that is like, yes, we know we're changing our brand identity, but do our consumers know our, our identity is changing and how do you educate that? And I think this is one of the ways uh, that you can kind of leverage the format as well. Yeah, and, and every ad, every conversational ad has a custom app sort of built behind it that's powering the conversation. So all, everything within that conversation, including you know the words that are said, are all customizable and you know changeable sort of on the fly. So you can you can sort of make adjustments based on these insights you're collecting and how people are responding to that. You can sort of make that on the fly, like in real time in the campaign. Um, you know, making changes in the app. You can upload new product content to the conversation. You can, if you're adding locations where your products are being sold, you can you can upload that as well. Um, one of the first campaigns we ran here, we had I think over 500 products that were integrated into the conversational experience, and so we've created tools and and software to help you know automate that and and uh, bring that into the conversation. So these bots can be pretty smart. We we definitely recommend starting simple and keeping it simple, you know, basic decision tree, product content, you know, whatever your objective is, and then sort of building from there. Is there another question? What's the minimum spend level? It's a sales question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> minimum spend question, minimum spend level. Yeah. Um, I have to get back to you on that. I think, I think it's somewhere in the $50,000 range. Yeah, keep in mind, I mean, there, there is software that needs to be built, uh, not only, you know, from, from Google to serve the, uh, the ads, but also from the last of digital to build the conversational app experience. Right, and, and sometimes it's not even just about the money, it's about the time, right? If your team is gonna put the resources behind building out something this sophisticated, you probably want a significant budget behind it to take advantage of the time and effort that you're gonna put into it. Yeah, and I think the only thing I would add is that also the budget just drives, obviously, volume of impressions, so you want the data to be meaningful. Um, so the, obviously the more data and volume you're able to create, the better you can kind of trust from an insights perspective, what did you learn? So if you have smaller budgets, like, like okay, is that just really noise or is that really a trend and insight? So I, I think there's some of the other trade-offs to kind of think about as well. I have just one quick question. So once somebody's entered into the conversation, and let's just say we're talking about lipstick this week, can I talk, to, like, does that stay with me? Is there any way for me to go back and reaccess that so that I can ask you about eyeshadow next week or nail polish? Yeah, it's a really good question. So we are working on it. So one of the questions, and, and this is why like we're working on it, is that uh, there's this whole notion of synchronous versus asynchronous or identity and kind of coming back to the conversation 
conversation as a user. Um, so we're working on it. Um, it's the ability, like in the future, it'll be nice to, you know, what, what I envision happening is today, you know, people only download like a handful of apps and apps are getting saturated. Um, would it be amazing like you download or bookmark a conversational experience from a brand that knows you and in the future you're like, okay, like, you know, when I'm done, I can obviously delete it, but then I'll always go back to it. Um, and so you can almost think about the conversational brand assistance being on your phone that you care about um, and messaging those brands um, on a regular basis. Like for me, I'm a big, you know, sneaker shopper. And so it'd be nice if I had like Nike's AI assistant on my phone at all times. Be like, Nike, like what's the latest? Have you, I'm interested in then ping me when you see my size, right? So, I mean, these are the kind of things we, I personally see them believe in the future. Um, and it's gonna be less about apps. It just, it's just something, it's just hard. Uh, and also if you think about development time, like the amount of time that you have to do development on building apps for Android and iOS and the, the cycles of approvals with the, with the lightweight AI assistant, like it's pretty plug and plug and play once you built it, so, which is kind of nice. And, and just leveraging technology, which, you know, people aren't logged into your site, but their cart, you know, is still full. It's the same co kind of concept there where you can sort of bookmark where that conversation left off and then go back into it at a future time and start, just like you would in a messaging app, start where you left off. Are you using um, smart Yes, we are. So yeah, so since probably the middle of last year, we've been doing add cart functionality, leveraging a variety of partners, but we've leveraged both um, WISC as well as uh, Smart Commerce. And that, and that, like to Mike's point earlier, that can be linked in to the conversational ad. So if you're going through and figuring out which products make sense, you're building a recipe or whatever it is, you can take that and load a set of products straight to your cart for, for Walmart GP. I think that is about it for our time. So guys, thank you so much. Um, as you all know, I'm sure you know Mary and our team, if you have any additional questions throughout the day, they're all here, so please leverage their, their knowledge of this if you, if you need anything further. Thanks.